On January 23rd of 2019, as the U.S. government's intervention against Venezuela intensified, and one day after Mike Pence publicly called on a largely unknown member of the National Assembly to proclaim himself president, President Nicolás Maduro announced Venezuela's response. He decided to break relations diplomatic and political with the imperialist imperialist of the United States. The U.S. government initially refused to recognize this decision, pending what they described as the cessation of usurpation by the head of the Bolivarian government. But when things did not go as they had planned, and on March 13th, the United States was compelled to withdraw its entire diplomatic staff from the embassy in Caracas, neither the embassy nor its officials were subject to aggressions or harassment of any kind. The same courtesy was not extended to the Venezuelan embassy in North American territory, which beginning in mid-April experienced an onslaught of attacks and encroachments. Venezuela. Diplomacy under siege. Although the assailing of Venezuelan embassies has become a common tactic to undermine the sovereignty of the Bolivarian nation, we shouldn't forget how the dangerous precedent of diplomatic violations against Venezuela was set in previous years. Cuba, April 12th of 2002. During the attempted coup d'etat and kidnapping of President Hugo Chavez, the Cuban people suffered a deplorable attack on their embassy in Caracas, instigated by the then opposition mayor, Enrique Capriles Radonsky. Esta sede está siendo asediada como nos asedia a nosotros desde hace 40 años Estados Unidos. Y jamás le hemos hecho una concesión a ningún imperio ni a nadie que venga por la fuerza a imponerse a nuestro país. The besieged Cuban embassy was cut off from water and electricity. Its vehicles were destroyed and its staff were threatened as a mob of right-wing Cubans and Venezuelans attempted to violently enter the diplomatic headquarters. Ustedes se van a tener que comer las alfombras, se van a tener que comer las sillas y las mesas que están ahí adentro porque no les va a entrar comida. Although the siege of an embassy violates fundamental diplomatic conventions of international law and is as serious as an illegal incursion on an entire nation, this transgression represents nothing new for Venezuela. Let's look back at some recent history. Spain, May 11th of 2017. More than 100 people opposed to the Venezuelan government staged an action at the Venezuelan Center for Cultural Diversity in Madrid, in which the Venezuelan diplomatic staff were subjected to racist and classist insults, harassment, intimidation, and then kidnapping. Ambassador Mario Isaya publicly decried this action, denouncing that members of the diplomatic team were violently attacked by the mob. <laughs> Peru, January 10th of 2019. A group of Venezuelan migrants residing in Lima appeared without warning at the Venezuelan embassy, besieging the staff in a violent protest. This episode took place after Nicolas Maduro was sworn in for his second term, just as the Peruvian government decided not to recognize his authority as part of the interventionist policies of the so-called Lima Group. Cyber attack, February 7th of 2019. The computer networks of the embassies were attacked as well. On this day, the network of websites of the Venezuelan Foreign Ministry suffered attacks that prevented service at the Venezuelan embassies in at least 10 countries. The hackers penetrated the websites of the Venezuelan embassies to publish a fabricated statement in which the diplomatic personnel supposedly recognized the recently self-proclaimed Juan Guaido a month after President Nicolas Maduro assumed his legal mandate. Costa Rica, February 20th of 2019. In the early hours of the morning, a fraudulent diplomatic staff chosen by Juan Guaido took over the facilities of the Venezuelan embassy in Costa Rica by force, violating international law and putting at risk the lives of the officials accredited by the Bolivarian government. They quickly retreated, however, after the Costa Rican Chancellor Manuel Ventura expressed his strong objection. Ecuador, February 20th of 2019. Nearly a dozen people with firearms entered the Venezuelan consulate in the city of Guayaquil. After insulting and humiliating the workers and clients of the diplomatic delegation, they proceeded to steal the consulate's funds. This attack takes place after an eruption of anti-immigrant xenophobia threatened the Venezuelan migrants residing in Ecuador, and in conditions of complete vulnerability due to an absence of police presence in clear violation of Article 22 of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, which establishes that the receiving state is under a special duty to take all appropriate steps to protect the premises of the mission against any intrusion or damage, and to prevent any disturbance of the peace of the mission or impairment of its dignity. United States. April 16th of 2019. With the rupture of diplomatic relations between Caracas and Washington, the accredited Venezuelan staff were obliged to vacate the embassy, and the government of the United States immediately recognized Voluntad Popular leader Carlos Vecchio as chargé d'affaires. 
By March 18th, Vecchio had already received from a defector two offices belonging to Venezuela's defense attaché in the United States, as well as control over the Venezuelan consulate in New York. Everything indicated that the opposition's next step would be to take over the embassy. Estamos tomando el control de tres activos de la República. La de la agregaduría eh, que acabamos de ver, eh, militar y naval, el edificio donde estamos actualmente, que preside aquí el coronel Silva Silva. Gracias al coronel Silva Silva, nosotros logramos preservar este edificio y medianamente mantenerlo. Chile, April 30th, 2019. Opposition protesters lay siege to the Venezuelan embassy in Santiago. The tense calm gives way to a confrontation, after which supporters of Guaido withdraw and leftist solidarity organizations are brutally repressed by the national police. Argentina, April 30th of 2019. A group of right-wing Venezuelans living in Argentina try once again to take the Venezuelan embassy by assault, following several previous attempts. Social organizations in solidarity with the Bolivarian Revolution, together with a group of patriotic Venezuelans, defended the embassy and stopped its illegal seizure. Unfortunately, the confrontation left two people injured and others arrested. La resistencia nuestra de este activo y de esta juventud impidió que esos guachos tomaran un centímetro de la embajada. Y aparte obligamos a Macri que odia al pueblo venezolano defender la embajada. Esta es una victoria política, se vea para donde se vea. The Embassy Protection Collective. The most emblematic of the battles waged around Venezuelan embassies took place in the very heart of the American empire. Days after the seizure of the consulate in New York, in order to prevent Vecchio and his followers from usurping the Venezuelan embassy, a group of 15 American activists from different organizations formed a coalition called the Embassy Protection Collective and entered the embassy building with authorization from the Venezuelan government. The activists held strong maintaining custody of the building for 37 days until on March 16th, the last four activists who remained guarding the diplomatic headquarters were evicted and arrested. During their defense of the embassy, the building's water and power were illegally cut off, and violent demonstrators, aided by police and secret service, prevented the entrance of food and water in an attempt to starve the activists out. Throughout the siege, they were subjected to constant abuse, insults, and physical aggressions by the followers of Guaido who gathered outside because this doesn't just affect everybody in Venezuela, this is the lifeblood of the United States of America, is disappearing down the drain. This is the start of the brown shirt revolution. The epic courage of this collective overcame the silence of the corporate media, inspiring the world to take another look at the Venezuelan process, gathering the solidarity of individuals, movements, organizations, and governments in other latitudes. Following their example of solidarity, it will never again be so easy to violate an embassy with impunity. We're not leaving. We're going to resist. We're going to stand in solidarity with the Venezuelan people and the elected government of Venezuela. We're still Stay strong. Stay